was thinking about a concert that I went to with my son a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to share this experience with you as a continuation from the last video that I released on YouTube uh, from the sign of the Son of Man. I wanted to sort of spin off of that last video. About a couple of weeks ago now, my son and I went to a concert and um, it was a concert that he had planned to go to for about a year or so. And of course he was gonna take me with him and it was a boys night out type deal. Well, finally the day came when it was time for us to go to the concert. When the concert began, just like any other concert, they would have an opening act and then they would have the main act. Well, this opening act intrigued me a lot because of what was said during the opening act. It was these two young ladies who were twin sisters and um, they were doing their performance. But in between their performance, they were um, saying a lot of mockeries, I would say, with relations to praise and worship. Now, for those of you that don't, that don't go to church, when you go to church and you go to the church service, and I'm talking about more like Protestant, Pentecostal type churches, the first thing that you will experience is what they call the praise and worship. And this is a time when you have the song leader uh, lead the congregation in about three to four songs. Usually it's two fast songs and then two slow songs. I know because I was a praise and worship music director uh, for a while. And, um, and what they will do between the songs, they would do something like what they call exhortation, where they would say, come up and lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Give him glory, give him honor, give him praise to encourage the congregation to respond in kind. And, um, you know, sometimes the services will go where uh, when the Holy Spirit takes over, you know, they would start speaking in different languages. I mean, you have to be there to experience it. Anyhow, going back to this concert, I realized that the women were talking in the same vernacular, the same jargon. Now, you may ask what is wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, except I believe it was uh, being presented in a mockery format because the type of songs that they were singing was more a um, type of secular uh, set. There, there was nothing really to do with Jesus or God or anything like that. And that's okay. That you know, We understood that the concert was secular and that's fine. I have no problem with that. But it was just what they were saying between their songs. And they would say things like, okay, and we're going to um, go before our king and we're going to worship our king. Um, and then they would giggle and they would laugh. And then they would say things like, uh, okay, now we're going to speak in tongues, you know, or when they were drinking their water, uh, because it was hot, they would say, okay, we're going to take our holy water. So my son and I looked at each other and we're like, man, what gives? I wonder why they're doing that. Well, uh, a little ways into their act, they said that they were a part of a cult. They said, oh, we just want to let you know about us. We're, and they said their name. And they said, we were part of a cult at one point. And I'm like, what kind of cult would talk about Jesus? And the Lord caught me in, 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 in the middle of it. And I said, oh, I see what they're saying. So I'm not going to say the type of religion that it was within, you know, that mentioned Jesus' name and things like that. But what I will say is that they expressed that their experience in that religion was not really... Um, favorable they didn't they didn't they didn't like that the experience so what that caused them to do is that that caused them to act in such a way like they were acting that evening and that caused them to say the following statements that um you know we're no longer in that cult and our goal is to get everybody um and snap everybody out of the sleep of religion and people were like cheering you know and the lord I felt like the Lord was saying to me, I want you to take that in and I want you to put this in your next video. And I said, okay. And the Lord, I felt like the Lord was saying that um, 
he said, the reason why Jesus was saying that many nations will hate you for my name's sake was because we, we do not present Jesus in the way that our Heavenly Father um, asks us to do according to his will. What we have tendencies to do is we have tendencies to take what we know and take what we've been raised up in and we never grow from that foundation that was planted and we start turning things into a religion and what happens is that when we attempt to present things to people uh, concerning Christ or God um, it's in a manner that is not welcoming it's it's more in a manner that is repelling people away from the kingdom of God as opposed to attracting people towards the kingdom of God and what happens is that we if we're not careful, we'll start browbeating people because they don't believe what we believe. Even if the intention is good, we start bullying people into what we deem as the gospel. And that that winds up turning people like these young ladies, which I, I just had so much compassion for. It just turns, in, tr turns them into a rebellious people because of how uh, or what their experience was like um, and they're, now their their depiction of Christ is no longer uh, an inquisitive it's no longer a nature of a person that wants to know more about this kingdom it's more a nature about uh, people that would like to get as far away from this kingdom as possible. Now here is a Bible verse of scripture that I wanted to read to you just to get a better sense of what Jesus was saying, okay? So remember in the last uh, video that I uh, presented before you, we talked about the little foxes that spoil the whole vine. And the idea that I was looking to project in that video is the fact that there are people within the kingdom that would be considered as extremists, okay? And the way they present this so-called gospel of the kingdom is not in a healthy matter, but in a condescending, condemning, poison type of fashion. I wanted to read you something from Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 9, and it was a parable that Jesus spoke to break this down. And it says, also he, which is Jesus, spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they despised others. So these are people who are legends in their own mind and they're self-righteous type of people. In verse 10, it continues to say that two men went up to the temple to pray. One of them was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. So I'm going to pause right there and let you know that in those days, tax collectors were considered almost like terrorists or extortionists in those days. Very evil, evil type of people. Um, this is because at that time, the Roman government had occupied Judea and they had hired some people from the Jewish culture to collect taxes by any means necessary. And not all of the means that they used were healthy, if you will. So it proceeds now to go into verse 11. The Pharisee, who was considered as the religious minded individual, stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. In verse 12, it continues to say, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Verse 13 says, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14 says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, which was the first religious minded guy who, who thought that his stuff doesn't stink when he was praying. And it continues in verse 14 saying, 
For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 